Hello Thank everybody. Welcome to Ybor City in Tampa, Florida. So we're standing in front of Casa Stef, uh, Stef, uh, <laughs> Santo Stefano. Stefano. And, Stefano. and uh, we've got a real treat today in terms of authentic Italian cuisine. Um, although it's not necessarily thought of as Italian heritage, the immigrants that came to the cigar factories in, um, to, to work and live with their families, uh, they had over 23 million Italians come through Tampa during this period of boom time for the cigar factory. So um, over there, if he wants to pan, are you able to do that? Oh, no, I'll move I with did. you. I'm an expert panner. There you go. So these are the um, shotgun houses, similar to what there was in uh, New Orleans, for example, just a really thin house that you could walk through pretty much uh, one hall all the way through. So they've been repurposed, a lot of them, but these still look residential. So um, the, uh, the uh, unique thing, one of the unique things about the, um, the cigar workers is that they were lured here to, for promise of a better life. They had uh, hospitals, they provided housing, you could buy your home like this, and it just gave them the um, you know, American dream, essentially. So um, we're gonna see more about that today. We're gonna visit the Italian club to hear about uh, that building and how they played a key role in the politics and in the insurances and in the care of the Italians that moved here. Um, but for now, this treat is uh, fifth generation Columbia restaurant group, Richard Gunsmart's Labor of Love, and you will see that shortly. He, I'm gonna let him tell you the statistic, but a major majority of the Italians who moved here all came from the same little town in outside of Sicily. So that cuisine is what Richard grew up eating when he stayed at his grandparents' house on the weekends or visited them, Nana sauce, you know? So we're gonna get some Nana sauce today, some unusual, the kitchen's amazing, and we're gonna see a Picasso, some amazing artwork, because Richard's a big art collector and all of his restaurants feature a lot of personality in terms of the history and the love that goes into this. Just want to say thanks, Mike. Uh, greetings to, uh, to Charleston, South Carolina. I'll be up in Charleston next week, hopefully to get another live stream with Jim. Thanks for watching, Mike. And Bar, hey, Manishma Bar, Manishma Makave Bar. Bar saying hi from Israel. Good to see you, Bar. Thank you very much. Uh, guys, if you are watching right now, please, please, please consider sharing this video right now to your friends and family. They will thank you. They will thank you. They will be the envy of you uh, if you do it. It helps us a ton. It's the best recommendation that you can give. It means that you actually really, really love what we're doing because you're willing to share it with them as well. And keep commenting. Your comments tell the hamsters out there in the internet that this is worth sharing with people. Those little internet hamsters, those algorithms at Google uh, are like, mm, is this worth sharing? If you comment, they will tell more people, which means we can please, more Please, please like me. Yes. Like her, like her. If you're watching on, uh, on YouTube right now, hit that, smash that thumbs up button underneath the video uh, to like this video as well. That'll help for probably about two hours maybe. Oh, wow. there's lots to see. There's lots to see. We'll take a break in the middle where we'll make an artificial stop on the tour uh, so the, the, the later audience thinks that this is actually two episodes uh, and uh, we got a lot to see. So should we go in and, and have Let's go eat, have maybe? some tour and food. Jenny, History I see you food. just joining there, Jenny. Uh, I already commented and shouted you out for being one of our sharers. You shared twice, Jenny Jean. Really appreciate you and your purple hearts. Peg, Peg Costello, love Sandman tours in Europe. Didn't know you were here in Florida. Heck yeah, we are. Chris Musha saying hi from Hawaii. Thank you, Chris, and thank you for your service in the United States Navy. Much appreciated. Thank you, Chris. Michaela has a full bottle of vino with her right now. <laughs> uh, vino at the first stop. I didn't hear any grappa or anything. Are we going to have something to drink? I don't know. We'll I, heard, we'll I, heard, I heard about coffee, but, you know. Mike says he loves Ebor. Yeah. Lots Hello. to love. Hello. Thank Welcome you. Santa Welcome Santa. for having us. Michael, so good to see you. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. This is your mine? microphone. Are you Don't put me it everything? in your ear like I did. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so let me do this. Chris How are you? bringing our world audience. Right. We've got Thank people you. all over Watch the world. Watch the right there while I'm doing this. Oh, yeah. So if you guys like to do that on while I talk about this? Sure. Uh, 
This is a uh, stained glass from Joe Testaseca. He has Sicilian uh, ancestors, and he started the he started the fine arts department at the University of Tampa. This stained glass used to be at. Uh, Joe they were demolishing that chapel, and they ended up giving it to, uh, to Richard Gonsmart, our fourth generation owner. And uh, we put it here. We have another version upstairs. Amazing. You'll so beautiful. Kimberly, just so you know, um, the mic. You can't hear me. You, yeah, you want to come, if you want to come uh, and stand in that space when you talk to it, then, uh, then it'll come back. So we, we store some wine up there. There's, everything we do has a story. So mm. this was a 1925 macaroni factory. Come back to you. 1925 macaroni factory and called the Ferlita macaroni factory. My mask is slipping. That's all right. So um, when they lost their home during the Great Depression, they ended up putting a loft in the factory. It actually was at the end of the bar where the bar is now, but we put this up as an homage, homage to, to that having to live in the factory. We have wine up there. We have some more pictures around here. A mixture of, of family photos and also uh, citrus labels. These are all citrus labels from Tampa companies. Wait, can I just real quick just to say, uh, Diana, I agree with you. It is a beautiful restaurant. Uh, Teague, yes, Picasso, the art is stunning. Guys, the website uh, for the restaurant is in the description for this video. So if you're looking to find the restaurant directly, the website is down inside uh, the description of the, uh, of, the, of the video, so you can click through very easily and find it. Thank you Our, very much. Sorry about that. That's okay. CasaSantaStefano.com. <laughs> there it is as well. Yeah. They don't remember anything. More photos. Cool. I mentioned Richard's childhood friend, Pelori's. This is this is their this is a family photo, Vincent Pelori's family. I think this is Vince. <laughs> so these are photos that Richard Gonsmar took in Santa Stefano. These are just three random guys. We say they've been, we call them the watchmen. They've been there for a hundred years. They'll be there in another hundred years. Just on the street in Santa Stefano. This is, uh, this is a street scene. You'll notice that it says Via Ferlita. This is the Ferlita Macaroni Factory. That's Via Ferlita, also in Santa Stefano. This is a World War I monument in Santa Stefano. You'll see a lot of familiar Tampa names there. Castellano. Piso, Ferlita, Cacciatore. Those are all very familiar Tampa names, and you see their names on the World War I monument. Giovanni Cabrino, who's uh, the gentleman, Giovanni from uh, the Italian uh, club, uh, recommended I go and visit the Italian cemetery, the La Union Italiana Cemetery. Right. And I recognize those names oh, yes. from inside the yeah. cemetery. Right. This, is, uh, this is Richard Gonsmar on the left. He's our fourth generation owner of the Columbia Restaurant Group and Michael Piazza. He's our general manager here. They're drinking wine on the side, on the side of Mount Edna, which just recently oh, erupted. <laughs> so I mentioned the artwork. Richard, Richard puts art in all of his restaurants uh, and even the plates are art. Even the plates are art. The countertops are art. Uh, he found this family over in Sicily. He couldn't speak Italian. They couldn't speak English. He called our Italian chef at 5 o'clock in, in the morning and had him translate 5 o'clock in the morning and, and, bought, and bought all of this. They signed it. It's right here. Amazing. Five minutes. We do we do cook everything in front. the uh, The hood, though, the copper hood, was made by uh, a local artist, Dominique Martinez, and Rustic Steel Creations. Mm. 
Beautiful. He, he's the same artist who, who did the front doors at one of our other Tampa restaurants, Ulele. He did the front doors with the gears. Oh, I didn't realize Ulele was one of the doors. Yes. Oh, that's very, that's a very famous little restaurant. Yeah, we have... This, but, I mean, that, that I, I've heard of that restaurant from outside of Tampa. The, well. uh, the Columbia Restaurant Group has 14 restaurants. Oh. We have seven Columbias. Um, Ulele opens for my mask. It's slipping again. Um, Ulele so opened. We can take them off. That's true. Uh, Ulele opened in 2014, mm -hmm. and we also opened a restaurant called Goody Goody. It's a resurrection of, a, of an Italian, of a uh, of an American diner, and that opened in 2016. And then, of course, this restaurant opened November 19th of last year. Amazing. So let me timed it. let me just mention let me just mention this. You know, this is a very small bar. You're good. This is a very small bar. Richard likes what he calls snug bars. Mm. And he had advisor who kept saying, the bar's too small, the bar's too small, you can't do it that small. He said, no, I want, it. I want a snug bar. So he ordered this countertop before we opened. And he said, this is the size. <laughs> this is now the size. <laughs> Build the restaurant around. That was, a, that was a preemptive strike, I think. Any more beautiful art on the wall there, too? Yes. Uh, you want to go up to the rooftop? Sure, let's, let's go, go to the rooftop and take a look. We have an inside uh, elevator, but let's go up. Let's take the stairs. Yeah, I, I've discovered that elevators and live streams yeah. don't get along so well. So I just mentioned this is our drive-through. You can do. We have convenient curbside pickup, and that's a 1925 Model T. Oh my goodness! Just opened as a Mac factory in 1925, so we think that's a that's a, that's an important date. So we have a 1925 Model T. And actually, our phone number is 248 <laughs> And I can see one of the Italian boars. Yes, absolutely. Pet the nose for good luck. Very cool. Gonna go upstairs? Yeah. The audience is loving it. <laughs> Michael, Sheridan asked is the, if the Model T is still functional? Does it still run? Uh, it depends on your definition. <laughs> we were able to get it here, and we actually drove when we opened Goody Goody, which also opened in 1925. We were able to drive it there, but uh, it's a little, it's a little um, uh, quirky. <laughs> this is our rooftop, of course. Ybor City is known for its chickens. They were released at some point, and they just run wild. They're protected. They're actually protected in Ybor City. You can't, you can't do anything to them. Uh, we call this the rooftop at Casa Santo Stefano. It's Santo's Drinkeria. Ah, I like that. You'll notice something unusual as we go inside. Whoa. Looks like it's not just a, uh, <laughs> a place for drinks. So we don't actually do barbershop stuff here. But if you, if you, when we go outside, I'll show you. There's a nearby barbershop. This is Benny's Barbershop, right here. Benny was, Benny was Sicilian, and so we wanted to pay tribute to him. And so these are Benny's tools, in this case, and framed. That's Benny's cash register. Oh, wow. Look at these old tools. So Michael, you actually opened the rooftop after you opened the regular restaurant, so it's been open less time, right? Yeah, we How opened. Long? Yeah, we opened. We opened. Uh, we opened the restaurant November nineteenth for dinner. We opened for lunch about two months later, and then a little bit after that, we opened the Drinkeria. We're uh, Drinkeria is open at opens at five o'clock every day. Looking it's uh, to we we have a separate menu up here, kind of like the lunch menu, street food and drinks. This is not Benny's barber chair, but it is a nineteen twenty five barber chair. I love the detail on the, on the foot plates. Yeah. It's a beautiful space. Just beautiful. Well, because, because a lot of the Sicilians, the Sicilians who came were farmers, so we wanted to, to do that. And there's a... Um, of course, And uh, we sell cigars here. We sell Newman cigars and, uh, and also the uh, Fuente cigars. From the two families. Newman just opened their cores back up of their factory, which is going to be uh, 
their 100th anniversary or 125th? Mm -hmm. There, yeah. I don't know exactly, but I know they did. Uh, they did a demonstration of lectors yesterday. Yes, yes, was, yeah. You know, they had yeah, people come in and participate in that. And I saw him he on did the news. and yeah. replicate the the lectors. So very cool. Um, I think that many of our viewers probably don't understand why cigars are so important to Ybor City yet because so, they actually haven't been on the tour yet, and it's sort of an assumption we make. But but it ties into the story of why Ybor City even exists. Yeah, we talk about that a little more when we sat in for lunch, but Ybor City was founded, it's called Cigar City. It was founded, there were hundreds of cigar factories here. And uh, they all had uh, high enough rooftops that they could see the ships come in. And they're all oriented the same way, I found out. But I, I'm sure that we'll get a little more of that at lunch. Yes. But, uh, but we were known as the Cigar, as the cigar City. And in fact, this, the Columbia restaurant, our parent, our parent restaurant, was opened in 1905, and it basically was was to serve, basically to serve the cigar workers. In fact, you could eat three meals a day for a month for five dollars. Oh my goodness! Oh, you guys have a second oven up here. We have to, yeah, because we have a separate a separate menu up here. We cook up here. You, do you still do your 1905 menu once a year for the anniversary? We we don't do that anniversary. Okay. It got to, it got a little out of hand. Okay. Uh, we do it for special occasions on special anniversaries, but not every year. And then uh, Vespa over here. There's nothing more Italian than Vespa. Can you drive the, can you drive the, the whole table out after a couple it, It's couple like of a beer tour, you know, it's a beer tour. Yeah, we, we drive you to drink. It's nice to be visit Columbia from out here. <laughs> oh, that's really smart. Michael, Shannon was very impressed by the massive Ferguson tractor. Uh, and uh, Jeanette, hi Jeanette, great to see you. Glad to have you on. Uh, and Jeanette says, what a great reuse of the antiques uh, to, to have in your decoration. Really impressive. Uh, and uh, It's all about adaptive reuse. And Dasamejo says, such a cool tribute to Vinny from earlier on. Oh, Sorry, Dasamejo, for not saying something <laughs> earlier. So this is our rooftop. You can see that's actually the... Uh, this is Vinny's Barbershop I mentioned. Oh, uh, yeah. The world famous Columbia restaurant takes up this entire block right here. Are we yeah. going to walk by there later gonna, on? We'll walk by there okay, on your great. way to the Italian club, I think. Fantastic. Right? And the uh, Fuente factory is just down here. So there's been a, a, a continued effort to restore these buildings to their former glory and repurpose them. And Richard. Really Yes, Richard Gonsmart said this was this was his favorite building in Ybor City uh, for years, and was so happy. Now you, you won't know to look at it now, but at some point in the not too distant past, this this building had three walls and no roof, and was in danger of. Oh, we're, we're outside, right? Yeah. Okay. Officially. Thank you. So <laughs> it was in it was in danger of being of being torn down, and local preservationists, uh, Fran Casasino. And, uh, and other folks, uh, the uh, Felita is an architect, his family owned this building originally. Uh, they saved it and it was used for some other things, but then we bought it, uh, the Columbia bought it a few years ago and was able to, to turn it into this. Like I said, it was rich. He wanted to pay homage to the Sicilian immigrants. He wanted to pay homage to the, the Sunday deals with meals with, with, uh, with his friends, Nana. So here we are. It's a beautiful thing. Just peek at downtown here, just for perspective. The stone throw from downtown Tampa. Now, that's, uh, that's the other city with another one of the big cigar factories there. Rick and Thomas. Oh, with the clock. They call it the clock building, right? Because it's, it's the Newmans, right? This is such a great space. I'm hoping we didn't get locked out just now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll add to Humor, right? Yeah. Tragedy, it's comedy, it's tragedy plus time, right? What I'll do is maybe have him uh, shoot around. I'm gonna, I can move, I can walk down the steps again. You're pro. Never get locked out of your own place. I just said that. <laughs> I, I, I can't, when I walk away from you guys, I can't hear what you're saying. The audience can because it's a hot mic the entire time. We can be about two football fields away from each other, and the camera will still pick up the mic. So Richard's just like, wow, well, gorgeous. So cool. 
This is uh, Eric Renson. Renson is an is a artist that Richard met in Amsterdam. We have some of his work in Eulalie as well. If anybody's been to our Eulalie restaurant over in Tampa Heights, uh, there's a huge piece right on, a, on an orange wall that looks very much like Picasso, obviously, mm -hmm. and as does this. But uh, his name is Eric Renson. This uh, picture here, this uh, is, is my doctor, that's Freddy Pacheco, who years ago uh, was served as a, as a waiter as a, at, at, at the Columbia, but he also was Muhammad Ali's. He's the one who actually tried to get Ali to quit before he did. He said he wanted him to quit, and he, when Ali didn't quit, Freddy did. I see. Gosh, there's so much eye candy here. <laughs> um, I might uh, walk back down the stairs. Yes, because, yes, uh, because of the camera. Of course. Yeah, exactly. I, I'll, I lose the live feed. So I think they're ready for us downstairs. If you guys are ready for lunch, let's do it. We have uh, this is all our free parking right across the street, right across 22nd Street. That's not rare not an assumption. Yeah, not an assumption that you have free parking here. It's my stuff. It yeah. better. Sorry about this. If I could have you guys on this side instead, okay. just because that way your front is uh, by the uh, your front by the window, the light coming in, and that way I won't have you guys. These are all the things that I never used to think about back in my old days as tour guide. Thank you. Did you let left chef know that we're here. Yes. Arranging some of your specialties for us. We're very psyched. Thank you. Can you hear everybody? Uh, yeah, sound is. We're coming, so uh, we pre-ordered a little bit so we could uh, not bore the audience with the whole look at the menu. <laughs> what are we going to have? What are you going to have? What are you going to have? I could to... never be bored. <laughs> never. Not at all. They, <laughs> might, they might be waiting for us, though. That's the thing. Well, maybe, uh, yeah, if I brought my husband, it might take a while to order. So <laughs> we, do, we do serve lunch here seven days a week from 11, 11 to 4. We have a separate dinner menu that we serve from four till about 10 o'clock. And then it, we, we were upstairs, there's a slightly different menu upstairs. It's mostly an ad adaptation of the lunch menu. Excellent. Plus cigars, plus drinks. The trifecta. We're gonna visit a cigar place a little later. Yes. Gio has introduced us to uh, um, Long Ash. Yes. We're gonna go over there and see a demonstration because we're in Ybor City. Cigar capital still of the world for over 100 years now. They were asking about that. They were asking about the uh, about the history of, of Ebor and why cigars were so important. There were hundreds of factories, right? 147 at its peak. And it's it's funny. I asked somebody about that. Why did people come here for jobs to roll cigars? And they said, well, you had two choices of jobs. You could go to what's now Orlando, Kissimmee area, and work on the sugar cane fields for 70 cents a day, or you could come here and roll cigars for a dollar a day. So you chose to come here. Uh, anniversary yes. that they started the lecture series again and for those of you who don't know the lectures wrote uh, read to the uh, workers so they would read the daily newspaper and uh, inform them about all things local and national news so it's kind of the original internet right. <laughs> and literature and yeah. literature and as well books, right. yeah. serials, favorite yeah. books I think they were talking about some of the father's favorite books yesterday on that show yeah. and uh, they were actually paid out of the workers tipped them so they each paid a quarter a day or a week, I guess, and, and it just it, for that, those days, that was a lot of money Absolutely. when you had hundreds of workers. And of course, that's why no matter what the ethnic, ethnical background of the roller, they all learn Spanish because the lecturer wrote in, uh, read in Spanish. Okay. Right. So no matter where your background is, you learn to speak Spanish. So in our next stop at uh, the Italian club, um, I was telling um, him that, Chris, that uh, what I think so unusual about the makeup of the immigrants here is that they all socialized. They, the clubs were not exclusive. So you could go to the Italian club for whatever dance night or the spaghetti night or whatever. That's and exactly yep, right. Yeah, and the Cuban club. And then... We had Centro Asturiano, which is of a, a, a Spanish club origin. And there was also Centro Espanol, which also was a Spanish origin. Which is another private event space now, Correct. like the Italian club that we're well, going to see. Well, Centro Espanol actually is now rented out and uh, for use for someone to use to put a restaurant in. There was a restaurant there recently. Oh. So that one's no longer as a functioning building for the club. 
The only ones in Ybor City that still function as a club with the original building are the Cuban Club, Centro Stuyano, and of course the Italian Club. We're looking forward to seeing it. Yes. Yeah. So we had... You were a chef. A chef is here? I do. Okay. This is Chef Alessio. Nice to meet you. So nice Hi, to chef. meet you. Good to see you, my friend. Good, great. What are you, what are you bringing us today? Are, are, excited. are we ready? We're ready if you're ready. Yes. Just, okay. uh, we, we, had, we have the burrata salad. We had the, uh, the mushrooms, I think, the sample, little sample of mushrooms. Uh, just the three, you know, like the two or three mushrooms. Uh, mushrooms, I'm sorry, meatballs. Okay, yes. Artichoke. Sorry, he was looking at me like, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah. We'll start with the artichoke. Right? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, would you like uh, to try to have some focaccia first? Sure. We'll oh, absolutely. I love we, it. Right we are now. in your hands, whatever you want to do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. So it's not just the Italians and the Cubans, the Spanish, and then also Germans, And correct? the Germans as well, and the Jewish as well. And I think the Germans did all this cigar box artwork I had. That is true, the and, and of course the, the German club um, was located on Nebraska Avenue, which the city of Tampa Water Department housed for the last, I guess, 25 years. And recently, uh, a friend of ours has purchased the building now and is gonna put their office in that building, which is beautiful. I really like the white marble on the outside of it. Really, the We looked at that building. Did you? We okay. toured it, we toured it yeah. when it was for sale. Yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful building. You guys have done a lot of renovations to the Italian Club as well. We did. Um, so 2018 was our 100th anniversary of the current building as it stands now. And we were able to, through the director of the club and many benefactors, raise quite a bit of funding to get much needed work done on the building. And then, of course, 2019 was our 125th anniversary of the charter of the club. In the so U.S., that's years. old, just for you Europeans, and us, uh, yeah, that's really exactly. old for Exactly. For, for America, that's huge. And actually, we are, the Italian club is the oldest, largest Italian organization in America. So that was a big undertaking for us. For two years, we were under construction, and we still have a lot to do. It's a lot of upkeep to keep those old buildings. And, you know, the other clubs. Cuban or clubs renovate and, them. Yes. And renovate them, which, which went on here. Labor which love, is, yes. Yes. You guys were working on this for how many years? Well, you know, it was it wasn't linear. We did we did buy it a few years ago and start, and then we got a little distracted by other projects that we were working on, That's a good and word. and a little distracted by this pandemic. But but we we're one of the few restaurants that opened right at the tail end, really, of the pandemic. We opened in November, so uh, it it was uh, it's a little bit of a leap of faith, I think. But we're used to that. You know, we're our parent company is the Columbia, and the Columbia. Not as old as the Italian club. No, but but we opened in 1905. 1905, I would say 160 years is nothing to sneeze at. And we've been through we've been through you know what they called back then the Spanish flu, yep. uh, world wars, depression, prohibition, urban renewal. So we're we're not unused to taking a leap of faith. The uh, the patio, the uh, Don Quixote dining room, opened in 1935 at the Columbia, and that's right at the end of the of the pro, of, pro, of, uh, of of the depression. Correct. And it was the first air-conditioned dining room in the city of Tampa. Quite a chance. It worked. Uh, there were times it was so hard. The uh, the, uh, the owner at that at that time, Richard's Richard's uh, grandfather, said, "We have another day like this. I'm going to go buy some nails and nail up the door close because we can't survive." Fortunately, that didn't have to happen. Right. So. I also questioned Eulalie in the expenditure as well, and that worked out okay. Yeah, I had to laugh. I, I started I started working here in 2013, and Richard had this idea for this restaurant called Eulalie, U-L-E-L-E. -L -E. It's named for a Native American princess. And most people told him he was crazy to, to open a restaurant um, it in was that, area. that area. It was well. It was there was nothing there. Absolutely. There were there were yeah. you know we there, there were for you know, we had a couple of bit, we had a law firm across the street. We had a, a building firm next to us, and Stetson University was down the way. And that was kind of that was kind of it. But Richard wanted. He always wants to do more than just open a restaurant. And and his stated goal was to help rise up, bring everybody else up with him. And and now all the property values are up. The tax the tax rolls have increased. But at the time, it was, I told him, I said, wait, you want me to market a restaurant that nobody can say in an area that nobody goes to with a menu I can't talk about? <laughs> As always, he's right. It works. So, but that's part of his childhood, again, with the nanas in that neighborhood, the trolley would take the workers back there. He, he, was, born, he was born nearby, at the hospital nearby. His grandparents lived up uh, Palm Avenue. At, the, at what's now a sorority house, that green sorority house yes. right there by the interstate. Uh, Capas, I think? I believe that's correct. Yeah, the Capas. And uh, 
So he, he, and his father always told him, if you get a chance to buy property on the water, do it. So he will tell you he's a man of great faith and he was looking for a sign. He's looking for a sign, you know, what should I do? Should I build here? Should I build here? And he said, and, and a manatee came up out of the river. The manatee came up and looked at him and, and he said, okay, thanks, <laughs> I guess that's it. And uh, we, we leased the building, the city, we responded to an RFP from the city of Tampa, so a request for a proposal. And they wanted a restaurant there. The city said, you know, we need something here. It was 400 yards from the Stras Performing Arts Center. But still, not much going on there. there. Great neighborhood. It was the first affluent African-American neighborhood in Tampa. Uh, so a lot of potential, but nothing going on really right then. So uh, we responded to the RFP. We were going to pay. The contract called for a dollar a year for, I don't know, 80 years or something. And uh, Richard had an option to pay for it, too. So a couple years into it, he said, okay, I'm just going to pay. And we bu actually bought the property. Now, this was, this was the former, the most recently, it was the uh, cable building for the city of Tampa, where our brewery now at Ulele, where this our brewery. Th we'll catch up. Thank you, Chef. I'll be right back also with our to bread, the house dinner bread. Oh, oh you have the lunch oh, and the two dinner. breads. Oh, today's special. It's a bread day. It's a bread day. <laughs> you can smell it coming off of it. Do you want to talk about the bread, Chef? Yes, uh, this is our classic focaccia. It's made uh, with 100% uh, uh, flour from uh, Naples in this case. Uh, Chef, I don't mean to drop. Would you mind walking over a little bit closer to Michael? Because sure. he's got the he's mic got the there. Thank so you. if you if you come in to then this right here, right here is good. Pick you up. Sorry yeah. about that. No, Thank you okay. very much. I appreciate it. So our focaccia, we serve it for lunch only, and we serve it with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and um, herbs on top, which are oregano, Sicilian oregano, some red crushed pepper, and import from Sicily ourselves. Amazing. Enjoy. Thank, oh, you. thank you, Chef. Oh, here. And then, uh, while we're here, we got the oil. Thank you this so much. Bread. Thank you. We serve it with a little extra virgin olive oil and the Sicilian spice. Right, for so addictive. addictive. Amazing. Manuela Soldi says, Ooh, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> Dustin Ejo says, uh, trust in the manatees. If you build, it, they will come. If they come, we will build. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if they come, we will build. <laughs> hi, Alex. Uh, Landry says, hi, Kimberly. Hi, Alex. Don't you wish you were in Ybor today? <laughs> Thanks for checking us out. Alex is our tour guide in Dunedin. So, ah. yeah. Get some locals involved. Oh, that is war. Alex says, yep, I'm well, listening. Enjoy. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Gosh, guys, it looks so delicious. Um, just to say for the audience, if you guys at any moment can't hear, let me know. But also, uh, if, you, if you have questions for us, please, please, please ask uh, us uh, because we want to know what, you know what questions you have. Um, and for the eaters right now, what I would ask is, um, as you're, uh, you know, we can't, they can't smell. We don't have smell of vision yet. They don't have taste of vision uh, yet. But so they please, can eat their hearts out. They can eat their hearts <laughs> out. But tell us about it. Describe the food to us as you eat it. So that way people have a sense of, of, what, it, of what it's like. Um, so I had this the first time I came here. And it's very almost med Mediterranean to me in terms of the texture, like a naan almost. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, you have that fire roasted oven, several of them, two pizza ovens, and then this incredible in the background, searing. What is that? What do you call that? Your chef will tell you tell you food questions okay. go to the chef. Right, exactly. All questions go to the chef. Gotcha. So, um, so yeah, piping hot and amazing imported olive oil and the fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. Very very nice. What do you Thank think? You. Delicious. Really nice. I expect nothing less. <laughs> Let me try some focaccia. So people. Can Michael just doesn't want to get anything in his teeth. He's leaving mm. that to us. All the green <laughs> specks, you know. So I was talking about ulele while they're yes. while they're sipping. Mm -hmm. uh, is it also is it what, what type of food is ulele? It's like New American. The idea was I was only kidding about not being able to talk about the menu, but we didn't for a long time. We said it was inspired by native by Native Americans. 
and people said, "What? You're going to have, you know, like, like, you know, bread?" Uh, and uh, we said, "Well, it, it's it's food that would would have been caught, or or raised, or killed by uh, by the Native Americans, and then filtered through all the succeeding generations of explorers." And and uh, I'll put this right in the middle. Thank, thank you. you so much. So you're talking about the... Uh, so this is uh, our Lele's uh, Carciofo. Thank you. I don't need a plate, it's actually. It's a big Sorry. classic. It's uh, actually Richard Gondmar family recipe. I can't help um, so. It is a classic in Sicily and uh, in South Italy. So what's stu what is stuffed with what? Yes, we stuffed with our Sicilian breading, which is a special breadcrumb, fresh breadcrumb. Different from all these breads? Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, and we, we ground our fresh bread uh, and we toss it with fresh lemon zest, a little lemon juice, the sea salt from uh, Trapani, parsley, Sicilian pecorino, and uh, then we use this Italian imported roast at hand. We ground oh. it and we stuff it and we bake it. It's a thing of beauty. Yes. Beautiful. Was, obviously the artichoke heart is going to be uh, a mission to get to it. Yes. Once, uh, you're able so to just get a leaf here, right? All the leaves, yep. Right. Obviously, yeah, we know the leaves are not edible. Now we are at the family table, that's why you do this. Yeah. Yes. Poor Chris doesn't get anything today. Nikki is asking me, Nikki and Ross watching from Edinburgh are asking, Chris, are you gonna try some of the food? And and yes, I will, I will. Teague, I agree with you. Food glorious food. It looks amazing. Mm. Delicious. Delicious. Well, at least, least, chef. At least, at least spend it by you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, Richard, do you do um, a very um, wines from the region, of course, as well? Yeah, we have we have our wine list is it has 250 Sicilian only wines. My fa my new favorite. I didn't know anything about Sicilian wines. My new favorite is is a Planeta, which uh, which is really quite good. Planeta. Uh, Planeta. Richard met the winemaker over is there. Is that red or white? It, which they make all, but mine is a red. My okay. favorite is a red. Favorite is but a red. They okay. make they make red and white. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard met the winemaker, and she did not do a lot of importing to the states, but but was so impressed with what we were trying to do here that um, that she promised him a certain quantity the first year and every every year after that. And so, oh, to, so good. To uh, quickly finish that Yulee story. If I could go back to that. So uh, they said, what are you going to have, maize? We said, well, we have all these other foods too. So Richard took that building down from the walls down to the bare floors and then built it back up. I remember up. the time-lapse video you created That's for right. it. That was very impressive. Right. Was it four years? Yeah, we thought we thought it would take less, but mm -hmm. but a lot of attention to detail. Mm -hmm. So Well, uh, again, as a historical... That's statement, <laughs> Richard. Attention to detail. <laughs> As a historical property, also there's so many things you can't do. You can't like put an awning up, so you had to yeah. figure out it was, like umbrellas. You yeah, know, we so did you receive can't it. The original structure. It was all about the adaptive reuse for that building, and uh, we did get a, a historic station in Tampa gave us an award for the work we did on that building, uh, right on the Hillsborough River, right on the Riverwalk, which runs 2.4 miles down downtown Tampa from Ulele to our other restaurant. Uh, Columbia Cafe I at the Chris at the visited, Tampa, Tampa Bay History Center. Yeah, mm -hmm. Chris visited there on Tuesday, I think. I did. Mm -hmm. I had a mahi-mahi uh, Cuban sandwich. There you so go. And so we we'll talk more about Cuban sandwiches, the Columbia a, slash, and the Cuban immigrants that came here and the food they brought. Well, and also the the Cuban sandwich really represents, we always say it represents every every group exactly of right. immigrants. Yes, it does. It, it's, uh, it's all about that. Yeah. yeah so that's like the salami from Italy, the... She, the, the pickles from Germany. Let me see how much I have. The roast pork, Cuban, right? Mm -hmm. What else do we have on there in terms of national? Swiss so, cheese. The Chef, ham. We had, a, we had a question come in about the food. Michael said we should only ask you about food specific questions. Go for it. Uh, <laughs> and the question comes from Casmejo. Uh, does the ham, uh, does the Italian ham have a name from the region it's from? Yeah, it's Parma. It comes from Parma. It's a very old. Uh, um, company, uh -huh. probably older than the Colombia, believe it or not. Oh. Uh, and it comes from Parma, where the prosciutto and the parmigiano de Giano comes from. And Parma was named the capital of Europe, uh, culinary capital of Europe. Um, Amazing. Of the many um, food uh, shows and competitions and the uh, DOP products that, you know, they have 
in Parma. It's in Emilia Romagna, Parma. Awesome. So it's a great ham that we use in there, yes. Did you talk about the meatballs? I missed that. Our meatballs. Sorry. Absolutely. Um, or as we call them, mushrooms. This so job is we so hard. use a custom uh, um, blend that we have. It's 50% uh, uh, pork, 25% beef, and 25% beer. Just like non you do that. We use our Italian imported pecorino romano, a parsley, garlic, and um, fresh bread soaked. Wow. So it, it keeps it nice and soft. For the bar and for the rooftop, we also serve the mini because our nonna used to make raised in tomato sauce, but we also like them fried and more firm, so we have that version on the rooftop as well. Mm. Delicious. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's some steam coming off of the sauce and the meatball, and the fragrant smell. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I'm overwhelmed by all these delicious smells, chef. Incredible job. What time do you have to get here in the morning to start prepping? What? I have a little uh, uh, meds in the back. Sleep in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice that they that they let you out of the chains. Well, we told you the for, we told you the Felitas used to live in the macaroni factory. Yeah. We we have some tradition with this, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a great team. There's a lot of us. And the cheese is amazing. Those. So is the cheese also from Parma? The cheese? Yes, yes, from Parma. Parma. Mm. Delicious. Thank you. Thanks, Chef. I'll let you enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, I feel like we could do a four-hour show just on the <laughs> Columbia Restaurant Group because they have so many uh, passion projects that they've brought back from, you know, Richard's history and, and, and again, being fourth generation. Goody Goody is another one, which is a little, just a little hamburger joint that he bought the rights to revive mm -hmm. the sign, mm -hmm. and it's down in Hyde Park now, and it's a family favorite. I mean, I take my grandbabies there all the time. Yeah, everything is a, it, it's immersive, I think. It's it, for him to do it, and then for, for our guests to come. It's an right. immersive thing. It's not, I mean, the music is all is all Italian. It's not, it's not, we're not playing American music. We do, we play some American stuff upstairs on the rooftop, but down here, it's all. Lordship, definitely. And, uh, that's the idea. I heard somebody talk about wine once. I think it was Paul Hobbs, and he said, he said, you know, when you when you when you drink wine, you, you time travel, and 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 you go to other countries by 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 stay, and you're still staying in place. So that's really what you want to do when you walk into a into a restaurant. It, it's it's about the it's about the entire experience. It's about the entire experience. It's not just about the food. You cannot survive. You cannot survive without good food. But everything else then is is, is a bonus. Mm. How is the Buccaneer coming along? That's your Sarasota <laughs> project. It's a uh, it's a property we own down on uh, on Longboat Key. The Buccaneer opened in 1959 originally by a guy named Herb Field, and uh, closed in the early 90s. Finally, he sold it and somebody else bought it, and it closed. But it was his parents' favorite restaurant. Richard's parents obviously worked in the restaurant business. And it was their, their favorite restaurant down on in, in uh, they take the boat down to Longboat. So that property was long gone. We bought another restaurant property called Patty George's, which means nothing, I suppose, to our European folks. But anyway, Longbow Key is about an uh, hour and a half or so about drive from Tampa, south from Tampa. Across beautiful, the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, property. And um, it's, it's waterfront. And they were known for their prime ribs. So like everything else, like Goody Goody, we, we, try, to, we try to bring back what was there, but also put our own touch on it. So Goody Goody really wasn't known for its breakfast. We do a great breakfast with 11-inch pancakes and things like that. Buccaneer yeah. will have prime rib, but we'll have all of our own special touches as well. So you ask how it's going. We, we wanted to get this one open first and, and see how it goes. But uh, we've got the property. We have a lot of plans. Richard's been buying uh, art for it for now for three or four years. So uh, we either have to open the restaurant or open a museum. I don't know which, which will happen. <laughs> Um, I was negligent in asking a question. Um, I, I'm actually not sure what we were talking about, but Dustin Mejo asks, uh, what about the rescued characters from the Lowry Park Zoo? Oh, those are Ulele. Yeah, yeah, those oh, are, yeah. yeah they're, I, can, I can talk about that. The uh, Ulele, after we opened, this uh, Lowry Park Zoo is, is the, the, main, the zoo in Tampa. Oh, okay. And years and years ago, they had an exhibit called Fa Fairyland, which had nursery rhyme and fairy tale characters uh, on display and they were beloved by by the children and their parents in Tampa but at some point after the zoo expanded they were discarded 
like uh, you know leftover toys yeah. Yeah. and and left out in the in the elements there was a, a campaign by by folks who cared about them Richard found out about it and the city put him up for auction so Richard went Richard went and I, I paid thirty one thousand dollars for these characters that have been left out Humpty Dumpty Humpty oh. Dumpty's on our roof three little uh, pigs, three little pigs. Yeah. I only have one house left from little the Zero Little Pigs. Little Boy Blue. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Um, Jack, and the Bean, Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah. Yep. So, Pumpkins, yes. So he, they were all at auction. There were 11, 11 vignettes, and he bought each one of them against other bidders. And then we had to restore them. So we put those out. And again, this goes back, a lot of stuff goes back to Richard's childhood. Uh, University of Tampa, uh, which is right here in the city of Tampa, and the old Henry Plant uh, Hotel, the Plant Hotel, had these two hunting dogs, bronze hunting dogs, that are on the lawn. And Richard used to, his parents would take them there, and he remembered going and seeing those, seeing those dogs outside. So he thought if there's a way to resurrect these memories and put them on display where people can see them even without going inside the restaurant, because they're on the grounds, not inside, they're on right, the grounds. You can see them inside. Then, then that would be that would be something he would want to do. So that's mm. that's where that's where the fairyland characters. And it is childhood memories because yeah. my daughter would tell you that she was scared of Maleficent, and that she came in to me one night that she had nightmares and she couldn't sleep. And she says that I told her that well, you can sleep with me or you can lose your bike for a week. I don't like that. <laughs> that does does not sound like my stuff. But that's just so. You talk about memories. They're they're all over yeah. the board in terms of it is so whimsical and cool. And we, we, we wanted to encourage we wanted to encourage parents to tell the stories to their to the children, uh, and it encouraged literacy, encouraged storytelling and imagination. We even did a uh, we did a limited edition uh, shirt at Eulalia that said "Happily Ever After," and had some of the, had Humpty Dumpty on the on the Fairyland logo, and uh, they, those sold out. I recently had people say, "Can I buy the shirts?" Like, well, I think I have to do another order to cool. make that happen. So we also didn't talk about their amazing craft beer at Eulalia. Well, we, we start. Yeah, we story. almost got there. Yeah. Um, the so the most recent use for that building was the City of Tampa Cable Building, and in their studio, in their studio is where we have our, our on-site brewery. Uh, cool. Some people would say that was an improvement. I don't have anything against cable TV, but <laughs> it's beer versus TV. I don't know. <laughs> but we make our own beer. Uh, our brewmaster Tim Shackton is, is great at what he does, and uh, we have four or five core beers all the time, and then we do specialty beers. Awesome. Uh, so there's there's absolutely absolutely that, and we have one name for uh, the mayor, James uh, Jane uh, Castor is our Tampa mayor. We have a beer name for her. We have a beer name for our previous mayor Bob Buckhorn. Uh, he was Irish, so we gave gave him a real a real stout. That's oh. a, that's the kind of beer we made for him. That's a great that's a great story. Uh, a great vignette. Um, I have a food question, but actually, I know that Gio can answer this question. Oh, and the no question, pressure. The question comes from Teague. Is this a lightning round? No, no. <laughs> Teague, Teague's, um, uh, Teague says, uh, I, I was at, he, Teague's a travel agent, um, and he says, I was at a travel agency meeting uh, with a Sicilian company uh, that said that like fee, seafood couscous uh, is a big thing, but specifically, Teague's question is, is there any specialty pizza from Sicily? Well, is there, and, and I know from having talked to Gio right. that there is. Right, it's cachata. So, so pizza, as America knows it, was, is known for the 1950s when Domino's and Pizza Hut came out of mouth. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you from, you know, people always ask me, it's very funny you go places and they tell you what Italians eat. I'm like, well, I can only speak what my family ate. But scacciata is Sicilian pizza, which I believe you guys do sell mm -hmm. here as well. Oh, mm -hmm. And it's actually, yeah, they do. And it's uh, it's completely not what you're used to when you have more of a sweet pizza. tomato, cold. Well, it's also yes. it's also much airier, almost like a focaccia bread, and uh, with a sauce on top of it. But it was it's a poor man's meal. And uh, I remember I was telling you guys the other day, my nana would make it not just with a meat sauce on top of it, but with just an olive oil and garlic on top of it. And that's what we call pizza. So when you think of, you know, pizza as it has, I don't want to use the word incorrectly, but as it has perversed into America, coming from Italy, you can go to Naples and have closer to it with a flatbread or something like that. That's more traditional pizza. But for Sicilians, we have a scacciata, what we call pizza. So local deli, Alessi is one of the founding families that mm -hmm. has products all over. You know, you, you said something interesting, which is you can only speak to what your family had. That was something that we... Is, is this was not just Sicilian, it was Tampa Sicilian. Right. So a particular, particular look to the sausage. 
right? And, exactly and, and, right. and taste. And so, and, and the other thing we knew going into it is that we figured everybody was going to say, not as good as my nanas. And, and we said, <laughs> okay, that. that's all right. That we said, that's okay. That's okay. We'll be second. Your nana will be first. We'll be second. We can live with that. We so if we that. don't get a chance to try, try the sausage today, I can tell you the last time I dined here, we had it. And again, evoking memories. My husband grew up by Prado's Market. So it's Enzo Prada who actually has in the kitchen making his family sausage. Right. Oh. And my husband gushed like a schoolgirl when he met her. <laughs> he was right. like, oh my God, we used to get your sausage. All Celebrity the time. chef. Sorry, Ken. I love that story. <laughs> no, but what you're saying is exactly true. Our family, because of where we live in Ybor City, we had so many Cuban and Spanish influences that that was all the food we ate. It wasn't, although we did have pasta every day. However, we would have rice and pork and beans and all the other things, multicultural, that were that thrived in building Ybor City. And, you know, and as concerned as we were, as, as cognizant as, as, as we were of that coming up, we were concerned about, we were concerned about that. We've been really reassured by the reaction to everybody because I mean this we put this on the menu this is somebody who just came it's like walking into a Sicilian Nana's kitchen taking a deep breath and knowing that you are home and that's a good friend of mine that made that quote so. yeah <laughs> and we have we, we just we just picked that up from she put it on Facebook so we, we just took quotes and started putting it on the menu because these were unsolicited we didn't you know it, the, there, there's a there's a quote I like as a marketing guy there's a quote that I like that says the best form of advertising is to be exceptional. That's exactly So right. that's what we're trying for here, and that's, that's why we pick up, pick up Back these. Back to the Italian side, it's two million, you said, that you quote also on the restaurant, of the Italians who came through here? It's on the back, it's on the menu. Yes, I know. I think it's three. I think it's one million also. While we're figuring that out really quick, I wanted to ask you guys something. Um, from, from what we've had so far, right, what, do you, what are you guys looking at and thinking, mm, this is my favorite dish that I've seen so oh my far goodness, that I really think coming. is the oh. one that I want. Um, you've got another dish right now to look at, incredibly. <laughs> so you have to you have to think about that while I'm while I'm showing you, you the, the new food that's coming oh, in. Oh, it's amazing! The, the, the chef show. is back. Yes, thank you. Uh, Chris, are you going to eat that? Oh, I, I mean, I, the meatball was probably the thing that many people have said is their favorite thing. It just seems like a shame to see it go away. But I'll leave it there. We'll, we'll just remember. <laughs> there's the meatball. There you go. And then my poor meatball. Right, the meatball, and then and then we'll take one last look at the artichoke. So delicious. Remember that, guys? Oh, nice dip. That was good. That archer was delicious. Oh, so good. And then, Chef, what do we have? What do we have that's just arrived? We picked one of our insalata. Um, in this case, uh, we showcase our burrata, which is a classic. And we started with our um, fresh uh, baby yeah, arugula, yeah, yeah. our heirloom tomatoes, wait till, wait till our stops. home uh, pickled red onion with uh, white balsamic vinegar. And we just put a little sprinkle of uh, um, oregano on the burrata and uh, our homemade balsamic vinaigrette. Awesome. And if I can just say, this is the best cheese in the world. Yes, it is. <laughs> this is the best cheese in the world. Thank you so much for the meal. Oh, absolutely. We appreciate Thank you, it. Chef. We'll be back soon. We have and more coming. We have, we, have uh -oh. we have a couple of entrees coming. Okay, okay. all right, well, here we are. <laughs> We may not get to the Cuban food you said, today. You said, yeah. you said three hours, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, two all we have. You just can't so cut it short. The vote's coming in. Uh, and a couple for meatballs. Uh, I want that artichoke. Um, the bread. Michaela says, sorry, I'm German. I love the bread. And it's true. It's the one thing that when Germans live abroad, they always say the thing that I miss the most from Germany is the bread. Uh, um, we've got a couple votes for the artichoke, and now the mozzarella coming in. Mm. Uh, uh, Diana Pombo says, Bon appetit. So. so, so much interest now in, in Italy and in, in Sicily, even more, I think it's probably almost almost unprecedented, I would say. Oh, yeah, series. His new series, yes. And he was just in Sicily, the most recent episode, he was in Sicily. So, a lot of people are interested in, in that. In, in, as, as usual, which was kind of riding the wave, right? Right. Good timing. So, so we, did, did we touch on the fact that why the restaurant is named what it is and the immigration from that town? Um, we could touch on it. it could be, we probably just glossed over it. So uh, in, from around 1890 to 1920, there were three million Sicilian immigrants who came to America. Many of them went to New Orleans. Some of them went to Kissimmee St. Cloud. 
a few went uh, up north. But the, the thing that we learned, or at least I learned fairly recently, because uh, I had to do some research when we started opening this restaurant, is that they found they could, they could replicate their, their op occupations here, right? They could do their, they could do their, <laughs> sorry. Someone's very happy eating, the, eating, this, eating this meatball or whatever. Uh, uh, they could replicate their, their, uh, their here. If they were, there were grocers there, they could be grocers here. The language was an issue because so many people spoke, spoke uh, uh, the language. And, and then, and the families call to family. It has happened with so many other countries where brothers would come and then call their brothers or their sisters. Uh, uncles would call their nephews. So they would have a, 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 a support system here. And uh, it's really quite amazing. Uh, what we're told, there's a great book by Gary Marmino uh, uh, on the immigrant experience in, in, uh, in Ybor City, but 60% of the Sicilian immigrants who came to Tampa came from Santa Stefano. That's correct. And, and the ones who didn't maybe came from Alexander del Roca, which was, I say it's like Tampa and Carrollwood, Carol, right? Exactly it's close right. enough. That's right. And, and so that's, that's what Richard thought about was Santa Stefano. And he, he's been to Santa Stefano five times. He's met the mayor. Uh, I think the mayor's coming at some point. <laughs> Put, he was a wine merchant. He said he was going to put the uh, Sicilian U.S. Embassy. He was going to put it here in the restaurant. <laughs> I think he was kidding. I, th I think. I think. You never know. I think it was the wine. <laughs> that might have been. No, but that, what wine. you're saying is exactly correct. Ninety-five percent of the immigrants that came from Sicily during that time frame, ninety-five percent came from three cities. It's really amazing when you think about it. It is. And is that is that what your pendant represents, actually, in a way? Is that well, pendant, the, uh, the, the Ternacria? The Ternacria. Okay, so this actually represents the three legs, represent the three corners of Sicily. Sicily is, you can use some kind of imagination built almost in a triangle shape. So this is the symbol of the Sicilian flag. Oh, wow. And when we go to the Italian club later, you'll see in front of the building is this same Ternacria. Which is funny because we really, we're really called, we are the Italian club, but truly it was founded by Sicilians. And there was a major difference in the founding of it before. Okay. Today, okay. It's, today it's fine, but back then it was. Because there were no Italians here. So what else do we have for a history wise in terms of, I know there's been movies produced here, there's different storylines, like if somebody wants to learn more about Ybor just by doing a documentary or well, we have We have the museum on 8th Avenue. Yep. Um, and the, there's also a museum on uh, 9th Avenue, which is the Ybor City Museum. My daughter got married in right. the park there. Right, my godmother is actually the director there. So everything ties in together there. And of course, if you walk around long enough, you'll find somebody here that'll give you a story. And it may or may not be true. Um, but everyone likes to have their own little spin on our history here. He's, he, he just wants to know about the chickens. I do want to know about the chickens eventually. But we, kind of, we, we touched into it that event. they were just they were. I mentioned they, they were protected. I mentioned they were protected. Yes. They were not protected. So I'll give you I'll give you a, a little little uh, nugget about the chickens. So as I tell everybody all the time, houses in Ebor City are now existing for 120 years, and back then all houses were built out of wood, and these houses are still standing. The thing you have to remember is what kills wood is termites, but what kills termites is chickens. So if you have chickens around, they weed the termites, and hence the wood is preserved. So those are the shotgun houses that still Correct. exist all up and down here. They've Correct. renovated, yeah. So the house my family lived in 70 years ago is still standing in Ebor City. Yeah. And the museum has, um, the state museum has one of those houses on display. That Several you can of the houses there, And right. see the furnishings and the lifestyle, essentially. That's it. So that's, that's, that's what I know of the chickens. It that's shows you how much I know. That's as reason as I've heard. Well, you know, it, it, that's a great transition, though, because you see, you, you've taken this tour, and you see we have wide open, we have wide open spaces here. It's all wide open spaces. Uh, so if you want to have a meeting uh, with PowerPoint, I don't know why anybody wants to do PowerPoint, but they do. Uh, we have a, we have a building next door, in one of those old houses, that that were for for meetings, and and you can have 35 or 40 people for 35 or 40 people in there. We're going to call it Nana's house. Aww. So so oh, you can book back, you yeah. can book that separately. We serve right out of the back, so it's, awesome. it's literally next door to the restaurant. It's uh, it's I, I asked the chef quickly uh, what milk 
goes into the paratha and it's cow milk. Okay. Yeah. There was a couple questions about it. There was actually a conversation going on between different people about <laughs> what, what it would be. And this cheese cow. will make you transcend to Sicily, I can tell you it's that. It's true. That's Gosh. the trick is you go when you, I've always told people, you go to Sicily, when you come back here, you're not going to eat cheese for a month. But you come back, you come here and it is authentic, I can tell you. It's something that, that Michael was saying before, which I thought was, was really powerful, um, that, that, that food you know, allows us to travel without actually having to leave where we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that from all the different senses that bring memories to us, there is no stronger sense than taste. Sure. And when you taste something, it brings the more than sight or sound or something like that. It's something that's really tied into us. And for, for what we're doing with our live streaming project, it's, it's, it's completely comparable to that because we want to allow people to be able to travel right now when they can't travel. Exactly so. So, that's right. so being able to travel virtually on a virtual experience is, is you know you don't have to wait till the next virtual experience. You can create your own virtual experience at home. And ultimately, it's through travel, through understanding different people's food, which is mm -hmm. their culture, which is their history, which is all the same thing, that we're able to build compassion for other people and other places. Right. Uh, and and I think you've really you've really nailed it with uh, with how food does that. I really appreciate you saying that. Absolutely. I feel very much the same way. Appreciate that. Uh, there's such a connection in, in Tampa to all the immigrants. It's an, it's an immigrant city. And, and one of the things we said about there's some jokes and then there's, there's something I think very meaningful. The joke is that, is that uh, the Sicilians were told that in America the streets were paved with gold. And when they got here they found out that not only were the streets not paved with gold, they were not paved and they were expected to pave them. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was the joke. But, but the truth is, the truth is, is that they came, they came looking for America, and instead they helped create it. That's what I think. And and I like that. It's, 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 it's true. Uh, that you know, stronger together is a, is a, is a, is a really important concept. And and everybody who came, everybody who came brought something with them. They didn't come to take things from us. They brought things to us, and and they they gave to to society and to to culture, and. You know, the country was stronger for it. Just really, just to say, hey, John Scott, uh, yeah, it is live right now. Uh, I won't shake the camera um, uh, because I don't want to do that. But yes, this is a live stream right now. We are coming to you guys. Uh, there's people who are joining that aren't part of the regular fan club right, now right. because the great comments and shares that are coming in from the audience, yes, love it, keep doing that. We want to throw a larger net, let more people know about what we're doing here today. And it's certainly a live stream right now. So. There you go, John. Hope that helps. And I agree with everyone. The mozzarella, mwah, it's so creamy. It's so delicious. Oh, gosh, I wish you could all taste it right now. Uh, and John asks, what's, uh, what's the name of the big guy? I guess not talking about, uh, he was talking, <laughs> talking about Giovanni. That's, that's Gio. Gio, uh, for the people that are joining are now, tell us, tell us really quick. Who, you know who you are and what's your what's your role and why it's important for us right now. Well, and then let Chef introduce these next dishes. Real quick. Yeah, my name is Giovanni Fucarino. I am a, a board member here at the Italian Club, a lifelong family member of Ybor City. Um, my my family was one of the founding members of the club, and thanks to my great great grandfather making his mother join, I'm an eighth generation Ybor City. Now, mind you, she came over at seventy, but. There we go. That's amazing. Thank you for of that. Course. And I'm just here for the food. <laughs> <laughs> Chef. So what we have next, um, we want to showcase our uh, stable uh, Sunday uh, sauce, which is our um, one of our uh, Richard Gosmar favorite uh, because uh, you know it reminds of a childhood and the Sicilian tradition. Um, the sauce with the homemade sausage, uh, the pork chunk, the homemade meatball. And the boiled egg. Ah, okay. It's here. Okay. Lovely. Oh my goodness. I never goodness. understood the boiled egg. Where the does that come from? Well, it's, it's, it's a tampon. During uh, you know, first and second world war, the nonnas they put the egg. That's what I always figured that it was like a staple. To their husband, to the man, to give power, energy, you know, to work. Ah, yes. I can't help myself. In fact, you can Photo find the boiled food. egg in lasagna, in um, eggplant, in the polio terrain. A lot of different families use the egg in a lot of recipes. Awesome. Cubans as well. And it's, Cubans and it's, have. it's hard boiled, right? Yes. 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 Okay. So, there you go, Shannon. It's hard boiled. All right. 
I'll go, go for it. it. The Prado sausage. Yes, Prado sausage. And we also have our linguine uh, alle vongole, which is a classic. Our middle neck clams tossed with a little red cross pepper, garlic, uh, white wine, uh, right. and our uh, clam juice with fresh grape uh, cherry tomatoes. When I came here last time, I had the cuttlefish. That was very unusual. You don't see that on many men menus. No, if you find it more uh, in um, like Adriatic areas, like Croatia has a lot of cuttlefish. Is that, is, is that in the octopus family? Oh, sorry, Adriatic. Cuttlefish, um, I think. Yeah. Yes, the it's uh, like totono, like the calamari. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. yes. It has a bone and it has a shell in the back, just like calamari. Yeah. They have shorter right. tentacles <laughs> and a bigger bone. So, Chef, talk, maybe talk about the difference between just Italian and Sicilian food. What's the difference? Well, obviously, Italian, generalize, you can't generalize uh, about Italian. Because, can I steal your mic off? Yes. Just because we're, I want to get the chef. Yes. Because, there go, because um, every region has its uh, uh, traditions and history. And um, as we know, the, the center of, uh, um, of culture, it comes from the heart of in the Mediterranean. So we go back thousands of years and that we had different uh, um, population that came to conquer uh, Italy uh, and Sicily and all the other islands. So every time there was a new um, uh, domination of their own culture and their food tradition. So there's a big mix with that. That's why Sicily is one of its own. Uh, it goes from the Vikings, uh, you know, the Arabs, uh, we had Spanish, there was a, so there's a great mix like in the rest of South Italy as well. Yes. Completely different from all the way north of Italy. Yeah. A real crossroads. Yeah, cultures absolutely. Cultures and, and yeah. cuisines and rest, you know, different influences. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you, Chef. Absolutely. Chef. Michael, if you want, you can just put that on the menu. If you're not eating right now, I can imagine if every time you hosted guests, you ate, uh, you'd, uh, That's you'd I, look I, like me. I, 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 will say, you know. I always say, like, they're like, you don't eat? I'm like, you've heard of the, you know, uh, uh, freshman 15 or the COVID 20. It's like the food tour 30 if I uh, ate on I every left, tour. I left the sausage and the hard boiled egg for you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> so a little, a little bit of trivia there for you for the hard boiled egg as well. It takes the acidity out of the sauce. I did not know that. And of course, we did it in our family as well as any Sicilian family did. And then what was funny is we fight over who eats the eggs. Because I like the eggs. crunchy rice for the Cuban. Right. There's always something like, you know. So we have to put as many eggs as we do meatballs. But I can tell you that it does remove the acidity. I'll you can use baking that. powder or the hard boiled egg to remove it. So you Some boil families, it beforehand and then you, you boil add it? You boil it beforehand and throw it in there. <clears throat> Some people in Tampa will use potatoes, um, but we always use eggs. Never seen potatoes. Neither have I, but I know other people that do it. And I learned that my family is certainly not indicative of a very Italian family. I'm just biased on mine. Amazing. What's the best selling dish on the menu? You know, it's still we're still so young that I, I would I would hesitate to say that because people people Can't go choose a favorite child. People go for what they know and then they're gradually exploring the menu. So I'm not I'm not sure that's that's indicative, yes. Okay. Um, I mean, you're gonna get you're gonna get meatballs. You're gonna get you know some of those things. But, but I think people are, are gradually working their way through the menu, which is wonderful. That's what that's what it should be. It's hard to get past the burrata. And people frequently ask Richard Gonsmark, you know, what's his favorite dish? He said. I made the menu. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. I think it says it's a cuddle, cuddlefish. That's why I ordered it. One, it's one, of, his one of his yep, favorite dishes. It's one of his favorite dishes. Yep, yep. Um, Dustin Ejo asks, uh, does the egg help with the, the salt uh, as well? Uh, or just the acidity? I, I can't speak. I'm not a chef. Yep, I just know it that it removes the acidity is what I was told. How true that is, that could be a Sicilian folklore. I was told that I was a Native American when I was growing up. It turned out it wasn't. Oh, well, yeah. I, can, I can trace my roots back, That's not, but I just know what my nana told me was the hard boiled egg is really acidic. So what part of Sicily are you from? My family is actually mostly from a, a city called Mezzoyuso, which literally translates to halfway up. And ironically, yes, the village is actually on the side of a mountain. Um, but it derives from Arabic for the village of Joseph. And as many should know, St. Joseph was the patron saint of Sicily. So it ties in pretty hard there. Oh, wow. 
The meat is so tender. <laughs> it just comes apart. So delicious. <clears throat> we ask Chef, but how, I wonder how long he co cooks that. Do we call it sauce or we call it gravy? You can, yeah, that depends. Well, we're in Ybor City, it's suku. Yeah, they're, they're oh. Gravy is a New Jersey thing. Okay. Down here we call it suku. Suku? Yeah. Never heard that. S-O-U-C-A, right? S-O-U-C-O. S-U-C-O. Well, it's delicious. There's a, there's a little subtle, like, heat? little heat onto that on the sausage. Yeah, there's a there's a guy from New Jersey who was asking me that question for you. I said, well, "What do you mean gravy? I had no I had no idea what he was talking about until now." I mean, right. Well, that's it's a New Jersey thing, and that's okay. But I think now I think you'll find that up there they're more Italian than Sicilian as well. Such a nobody's perfect. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the subtleties though are just incredible, just from even within Italy, and then how Absolutely. it transported to the U.S. It's, it's well, it's funny. People, I was, you know, I was telling someone that the analogy of Italian is very funny, and I don't think this happens with any other ethnicity or, or, or ancestry. But if you tell someone you're Italian, they will find a link. My, <laughs> my next door neighbor's niece, she dated. What does that have to do with you? But they find a link. I love. It. Really cool. Um, uh, Manuela Soldi, who um, I, uh, Manuela joined us not too long ago, and is um, I believe Manuela is still in lockdown in northern Italy right now. I was talking about seeing trees with birds in it, and how nice it is to walk outside with us. Um, she says um, she's Italian, uh, but she's never seen the dish that we were eating right now. But Alessio explained it very well, and that in each region we have our own traditional food. Um, and that dish, being from from Sicily, from her region, she, she's just not familiar with it, actually. But I think that's really neat how Italy and Sicily can be so regional that actually people Regional's in the same country it, yes. don't even, aren't even familiar every day with that food. Well, you'd you know? be very hard-pressed to go to Italy, and I think Michael can attest to this, to order a spaghetti and meatballs or chicken parmesan in Italy. Did the it's same not going to happen. Anywhere. It's not going to happen. No, they don't oh, it's have it. Americanized. It's an Americanized thing. Same thing happens with with our dishes. You know, paella and uh, in, exactly in, in, right. in Spain and paella here, not not the same. And and also, it's filtered. It's filtered through not just Italy and Sicily, but filtered through through Americanized and American palates. So, yeah. so paella Chinese for, food. Yeah, paella like for those who well, don't remember, know is pasta a, is from the Orient. So you were talking earlier about the Cuban sandwich. I don't know if you realize another part about the about the Cuban sandwich. One thing about it is nothing. They you could make them that for sandwich lunches, right. So you take they that could sandwich take them to lunch, factory, right? and it would last all day long. Right, it didn't have to be refrigerated. Now, it's of course that's of course been changed throughout the years. People add this and that, but traditionally, the only condiment on it was pickle and mustard, which will last forever. For those who are not in the know, Tampa is the home of the Cuban sandwich, not Miami. Yes, and you will not get the same sandwich if you go to Miami or a Cuban sandwich. And then we sure. have the uh, version, which is the uh, just the uh, oh, wow. media noche. Right. And the difference on that is well, the bread's different. The right. media noche is a little bit. The, the bread is just softer. It's an egg bread. So we have um, amazing uh, um, bread factories here. Else. Uh, uh, La Segunda, La Segunda, Segunda. Central. We've been we've we've been getting our bread there. They're more than 100 years old. Uh, we've been getting our our dairy from Sunny Florida Dairy since 19, the 1920s. Uh, we get uh, we get our coffee from Naviera Coffee Mills. Uh, another Ybor City staple. Yeah. Another Ybor so it's still staple. open? Isn't the building closed now? They, they we we actually own that building now. Okay, I we, look we, forward we, to we, hearing oh, things. Yes, we, we own that building, but they moved. They they had to. They need to expand. They need to modernize. So they they moved a little uh, bit away, but uh, we'd like to have some annex there where we're actually. I, I, I miss smelling the coffee. Yes. Coming to work every morning. I, that that's something I, I miss, and we need to figure out how to get that back. A couple but, million will solve that. I well, you know, um, <laughs> I bet you I know a guy that can come up concept. with. You know a guy shocked. that can come yeah. up with a solution. Yeah. Sure <laughs> I'm a firm believer. If you can dream it, you can do it. Yeah. That's so, right. You've proven We've seen that a manatee time to again. show up on Seventh Avenue. Why? Wow. <laughs> do that. So I think uh, so. They were uh, Naviara. He was. Uh, he named it for uh, his. He's fourth generations. His great grandfather stowed away, right, on the Naviera. That's why he named it Naviera oh, Coffee. Oh, he was oh. a sto and he was a stowaway. Wow. So it was a Naviera uh, uh, line, and uh, that's why he named it that. So we've been we bought. He's fourth generation. Well, I would have We're, thought it was a family name. I didn't know that. Oh, interesting. Kinda is. There's oh. a there is it is exactly. There's a <laughs> lot of little interesting things about Ybor City 
for example, Highway 60 that everyone mispronounces is Adamo, not Adamo. Oh, Dr. Adamo found a Nibor City guilty. native. Guilty. I definitely say it wrong myself. Found, found the cure to gangrene and saved millions of lives during World War II. Wow. And he was from right here in Nibor City. Much like uh, Philip Shore Elementary, our neighbor right down the street here from the restaurant, uh, was Felipe Costa. And when he became an Americanized citizen, he told the judge, I want an American name. So he changed his name from Felipe to Philip and from Costa to Shore. That's a wow. big change all yeah. the way around. Um, Nikki and Ross, writing from Edinburgh, Scotland, ask, um, was the restaurant very busy during the Super Bowl when it was here in Tampa? Yes, actually, we were pretty busy. Um, it wasn't quite as busy as normal Super Bowls. Comparatively, yeah. Uh, this, this was our the fifth Super Bowl that Tampa hosted. Oh, was wow. hosted. Tampa first, Bay. Was in, first one was in 1984, but but yes, it was it was actually pretty busy. Uh, they didn't have as many parties yeah, as they normally not do. Yeah, as many corporate yeah. events. It, it, and, a lot of yeah. corporate uh, things like that. But but as far as just people coming in, absolutely, absolutely was busy. Thank you for asking. I was married in Edinburgh. Oh no way! Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. We were uh, we were married in Borthwick Castle. Oh, wow. So. You hear that? Did you hear that, Nikki and Ross? That's six degrees of separation, huh? There you go. I love it. So there's also cool. some new development down here with the hotels. Um, uh, Haya Hotel. The Hotel Haya, yes. Yeah. Then, Named after Ignacio Haya, which is the first cigar factory in uh, Ybor City. How many are left now? I know you said there was 100 and some point. Uh, in Ybor City, there's a handful of large operations. But I was told recently, and I found it hard to believe, but I guess it's true, is that uh, we're still one of the largest cigar-producing cities in the world. So all of that history has to do with um, Henry B. Plant, who had the steamships that brought the tobacco from Cuba, brought the workers from Cuba. Everything ties back together to, to the, the industrious, for a better wor lack of a better world, word, who, uh, who settled in this area and, and made their fortunes through railroad or steamship and, and the commerce that was citrus right. and tobacco. Yeah. Also on, the, on the east coast, He was yeah. on the other coast, yeah, west coast is planned. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Sorry. No People don't realize that the streets and everyone here, there's a name behind, there's a person behind those names. A lot of generals, right? right. right. A lot of generals in downtown. Like most of the streets down there, I think, are you generals. Know, McFarland names. was a person. Mm -hmm. Courtney Campbell Causeway is named after an individual. Right. You know, so those things Andy, are, are right. very important mm -hmm. to the tie of the city. Mm -hmm. so I, I have a question for the, for the audience really quick. Um, I, I can't imagine eating much more food right now. We have dessert. Uh, <laughs> all right. Guys, if there was one if there was one last thing that you wanted to see me eat right now. <laughs> right, I have one more bite of the of the of what's on the table. I just wanna I just want people to I wanna hear it. What would you like me to eat one last thing for the camera? You already had the egg. I, I mean, I've had a bite I've had a yeah. bit of everything. Yeah. It's just a question of what you guys <laughs> would enjoy me eating the most right now. Let me know in the comments. Go ahead and comment and let us know uh, what it is that you'd like to see me stick in my my, my big pie hole. Uh, and uh, and it's gonna happen. Uh, and then there's dessert, of course, uh, coming on. Uh, Nikki says, such a small world, that's amazing. Hope you loved Edinburgh. Absolutely. Great museum, and it was a lovely time. Uh, Michaela, How many years? Michaela says, never miss the dessert. We were in 2003. 2003, oh wow. 2003 was the year that I started my historical walking tour company in, in Berlin. I just had my 18th year anniversary, which is which is weird considering I'm, I'm 43 now, but um, but yeah, you know, that was that was us. And in 2019, we, we had amazingly 2.2 million customers on our tours. Oh, that's so great. Uh, across 20 cities. So 2020 was a different year, but we're hoping, you. you know, big things for the rest of 2021 and 2022. We could so. see it. We could see everything coming back. It's, uh, we're, we're ca everybody here, I think, I should everybody. We're cautiously optimistic with, uh, with the vaccines coming out. A lot of people, the, the cases going down in many states. Um, cautiously optimistic, I think. I, I, would, I would agree with that. People are itching to get out and they're starting to get Very out. Very much a pent-up They don't know, We've had a few events at the club and people don't exactly know how to act yet, but you can see people want to get out. Yeah, live music and some of those things are going to be the last, you know, ones that right. really kind of I mean, rebound. the restaurants are 100% capacity and you guys are Have certainly been. flourishing here. Yeah, we're, we're allowed. We don't we don't seat it 100% yet. We're, we're allowed to in Florida, but we're, we're still doing reduced capacity and social distancing. But that's a responsible decision you guys are making. That's It's our right. decision. And, and we wear, as you saw, we wear a mask. Uh, the staff wears a mask. We wear a mask until seated. We obviously took them off to... Uh, to eat, but 
So that's that's continuing for a little while yet. Hopefully shorter than the Spanish flu. Spanish flu was three and a half years of math. All right, the, there's there's a there's a challenge for me to. Uh, I mean, I don't know why Jeff Hawk is so hot on me putting an entire cannoli in my mouth. Jeff, we don't even know what's for dessert. I'm not gonna put a. We whole do. Th- cannoli is coming. Ah. Oh, my favorite. We have cannoli, Jeff. tiramisu, and and uh, and some gelato. Jeff, what have you done to me? Thank you. I'm gonna have to put a whole cannoli in my mouth now. <laughs> so but the, you the can vote remove these and bring the desserts. The vote for the okay. main is that I, I eat a little bit more meatball. That was the one that got the most votes. It was and, delicious. And I have to say the meatball is delicious, so I will eat a little bit more meatball for you guys. Um, the whole idea of eating on camera actually starts uh, in uh, from. Um, uh, is that that's the same meatball? So I'm gonna go with a uh, more recent meatball. Okay. Um, the, uh, it comes from South Korea, and it was an idea, or the name of it, it's called mukbang. And mukbang was the first actually really popular yeah, live streaming that was there. And it comes from that uh, food unites us. It brings people together around a table, especially friends and family and all the rest Breaking of it. Breaking bread. Breaking bread together with other people. In fact, a lot of kashrut law um, designed by the rabbis you know, in, uh, during the time that the Jews lived amongst the Byzantinians. Um, they um, they created kosher law to make sure that the Jewish people wouldn't be absorbed into the society that they were around. Because if you can't eat the same food as other people, you don't end up going home with other people, and you stay isolated from them. So oh you yeah, you can't you sit at the same you table. You couldn't sit at right? the same yeah. table. You have right? no connection, right? Yep. So um, uh, so it's such a you know it ends up being such a such an important connection thing. I, I had a food coma. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> but it was interesting. I had no idea. <laughs> I, 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 That's I, amazing. I, I just I tangented my own self. All right. Anyway, <laughs> if you guys remember what I was trying to talk about, you let well, me know. The, I've the, got so the, much the trend that people will virtually watch other people eat, essentially. That <laughs> is yeah, true. Well, that's it. Yeah. Just briefly, um, the exterior. We're not going to have a chance to go in there today. But also, uh, Michael has uh, offered to share the sangria recipe. Yes. The original sangria recipe. So perhaps we can. That on a we have a we have Amazing. a video we'll send to you that uh, is how to make it and uh, you can make it at home. Very very awesome. There's a question for you, Kimberly, specifically about wishing on a pickle stem. <laughs> you know, it's a tradition. When you get the stem of the pickle, you make a wish. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a lot of respect coming for Anthony Bourdain right now because you invoked the Grand Master's name and. Uh, it's hard for everyone not to show respect. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we miss him. We miss you, Anthony. So, anyway, sorry, not to dark, not to out of respect, no. though. That's no, what I'm saying. And so. we and we, we put that on there for a reason. Oh my goodness! Because, oh you go. my gosh! <laughs> you get the cannoli, I think. I don't know. That's what Jeff insisted. Yay. So, yes, Beautiful. We cannoli. Well, good news is it's a smaller. Somebody asked for him to get the whole cannoli in his mouth. I, don't, I can't do it. I mean, I'll get I'll get a quarter of the cannoli. In. I can't have it, so and we brought you a sample of our gelato pistacchio, pistacchio di Bronte, Ooh. which come from the can I step, step in? at the bottom of the Etna volcano. Oh gosh. So the cannoli, we make them a little smaller here. No carbs, no sugar. Uh, we make the shells in the house. It doesn't count. With doesn't a little bit dark because of the cocoa. So Jeff, a little bit of cocoa in the marsala wine. Oh, is that why they're use. darker? Yes. Okay. And what are the... Is the uh, That's the uh, orange pistachio? that we import. There's pistachio, yes, and candied orange from Sicily. I love that because I hate when they put chocolate chips on cannoli. So well, like, that's just sacrilege. <laughs> like, well, we do put a little mm-hmm. chocolate chips. I know pistachio. a lot of people like it. I prefer to yeah. And what is the flavor here? I didn't hear. That's a pistachio from uh, Sicily. Oh. And the, the pistachios actually come from the Bologna. bottom of the mountain. Oh my gosh. And that's our tiramisu made with uh, mascarpone, uh, rum. The texture on this is amazing. Well, you guys do a lot of your own ice cream. You do that at, at uh, Ulele too. You developed the whole menu. Yeah, I think. Do we use Emery Thompson here? They're, uh, they're fourth generation. Richard uh, Richard discovered them when we were, uh, I think it was Goody Goody or Elaine, I can't remember. And uh, he was trying to find out where they were. They used to be in the Bronx. And they had closed in the Bronx. The New York Yankees, the baseball team, had bought their property. He couldn't find them, couldn't find them. But they found them, they were in Brooksville. Brooksville is, is about 45 minutes east of here. They, were, they moved from the Bronx to there. He's like, okay, fourth generation. Right? Right. Gosh. 
Sure. It's great. It you, helps a lot. You are outdoing yourself here. Um, I, Amazing. I, there are there are people threatening to turn off the live stream because they're so jealous of the tiramisu. <laughs> that's that's what I'm getting. Like people are like, I'm, I have to leave now and go someplace and buy tiramisu right now because it looks that good. Oh Thank you goodness. so much. Well, you see, we, we, enjoy import, it. we import a lot, yes, sir. including our chef. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I can Thank you it. for doing it. Oh, we're, sure. we're blessed to have it. I can it. taste the cocoa in there. Thank you. Yeah. You, were, you were talking about the texture that, that jumps out at you. It's yeah. just euphoric. It's just sure. very, very um, rich and, and intense. Look, the gelato is amazing. Yeah, Michael's even eating now. Jeff says before when I said uh, uh, the more recent meatball, he thinks that would be a great name for a band. <laughs> the more recent meatball. <laughs> you know, it's really fun, hard to find a name for a band. Everything's pretty much taken or signed up. So right? that's a really good idea, Jeff. Thank you. Now my nana always told us, eat dessert first. That way you always have room. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> I worked with a photographer once who said, life is short, eat dessert first. <laughs> She was a five by five, by the way. So she followed her own advice. <laughs> Incredible. Uh. Well, this was absolutely amazing. What was this a fourteen course meal? Best. Uh, this was this was this was this blew away our expectation. So much. It's always our goal. It's what wasn't what I thought we were going to do, and it's like. The thing is, is that we should have been out of here like an hour ago. So Thank you guys for staying with us this entire sure, time. Yeah. But we, could, but how could we leave when this amazing food and chef and Michael's such a great host and this beautiful restaurant and there's a Picasso over my shoulder. <laughs> and my staff has now seen me over here eating and they told me that we have to come for lunch and they want, they're expecting us, they're expecting me to buy them a spread like I just ate. Yeah. Oh See? boy. There Marketing works. It yeah, works there great. You go. Yep. <laughs> Tell Richard you need a raise on that one. <laughs> Well, we should have you. started with dessert. I agree. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. That gelato was amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. And you haven't had the gelato yet. No. Oh. This is. Oh yes, yours is still waiting for you. Manja, manja. Get your gelato there. there. This is. This is so good. This is so good. I don't want to eat cannoli. Why would I eat cannoli? <laughs> This tiramisu is so good. You haven't had this cannoli yet. Delicious. Death by food. I mean, life by food. Ah, there you go. That's where I was going. Wow. Definitely. Oh, man. The, and if we weren't working, we would try some of these Sicilian wines. So maybe next time. We'll Come do, back for it. We're sort of at the, at the very end of lunch and uh, Next time we come for dinner and we'll uh, we'll drink some wine. We'd love that. Well, we were we were we were trying to um, have uh, visit Tampa Bay co-host with us today, um, but they're a larger organization, um, and actually, quite amazingly, it speaks a testament really to your group that you guys are also a larger organization. But you managed to turn this around and have us come in and prepare this all like a like a yacht, like a nimble vessel <laughs> on the ocean. And, and even though you are a tanker, actually, in many ways, and they were not able to, uh, to co-host Well, they had somebody this out this week, and exactly. of course they've lost a lot of their staff. They well, you know, it, it, I, I, I appreciate you saying that, yeah. but our, our, our corporate philosophy, our family philosophy here is try to get the yes. So it may not be exactly what was asked. We sometimes will do more, sometimes less, but we try to get the yes somehow. And we try to do that things like this but but when you come to the restaurant as well it shows it shows well, we're gonna get out of your hair really really soon um, and I'm fine. Uh, I will walk past the Columbia I'll show you the Columbia and great. then on to your beautiful place I appreciate yeah, that. are we gonna take a break in between yes I guess what we'll do is um, after the after the Columbia we'll, we'll do an official end to episode one of this of this live stream because it's so long we're gonna have to split it into two episodes for the video on demand version of that. And and the And then we'll be back for dinner. Yeah, right. exactly. Well the end of episode the end of episode He's one, gotta eat, he had dessert. The end of episode one will be uh, like a five second end of episode one. We'll count to ten and then we'll start episode two right off the bat. Okay. Uh, but it's Stay just tuned. it's just so people can digest it so they can digest it later on. 
uh, as well as a different unattended pun uh, as it goes. So, and, and I think that we'll do is we'll Colombia and then we'll end episode one and then we'll start episode two as we're walking towards the Italian club, uh, the Long Ash and the rest of it. Perfect. Does that makes sense. We'll great. follow your lead. Yeah. Great. Okay. I, people, are say, people are noticing that I'm avoiding eating the cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat the cannoli, guys. You know, like, it, you know if you put the challenge out there, you have to fulfill it. I mean, <laughs> my favorite... It's in a Geneva Convention. You see what I meant on the texture on that? Yeah, you can just see this. I mean, it's there's there's so creamy. such good product in it. You can really just see how good the product is inside of it. It's delicious. And pistachio is my favorite ice cream gelato flavor uh, thing. I, as a kid, everyone thought I was a nut because they were going for Rocky Road. Is that a good play on word there, sugar. huh? You're a nut that likes pistachios. You know what we're it is? Funny now. Yeah. This food is inspiring me to be a punter. You know, and I don't mean to be, but all right, let's see how it is, right? Mmm. Mm. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, my mouth inside has a layer of cream all inside of it, and the taste just goes on and on. It doesn't end. Like I'm gonna take a bite of this. I'm gonna be tasting it in half an hour still. It's so good. Mm. You guys are keeping secret about how much you enjoyed it. <laughs> I, wanted hear, I wanted to hear more of how the flavor profiles worked for I'm you I'm sorry guys I didn't well. do it justice. It, it definitely... The gelato's yeah. ridiculous, yeah, I can tell you that. Uh, I get it at every meal. Every meal, including breakfast. <laughs> Kristen asks, how's the mouthfeel? It's, it's just this amazing creaminess. You, We're good. you know? Thank you. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. Chef is whispering yeah. something dangerous, I'm sure. All right, all right. Should I do? I can't get. I can't put a cannoli in my mouth, but only because they've they've asked, and I feel obligated. I've had some pistachio. I'm gonna go with the orange side of it. It seems like a, I honestly believe it's a shame to eat food in big bites. I, I but because why? Why not? Why not take your time? That was another thing that you were saying about about enjoying and taking your time. Going to a restaurant should be an experience that you drag out. That you that you. And it's something that my, my a, a restauranteer friend of mine, uh, who's not as not as a small organization, just three restaurants here in Tampa, um, he was saying that it's really a funny thing that as a restauranteer, if someone uh, waits for 15 minutes for a reservation, they might they might burn you on on a review. They might write something negative about you. But if they wait for an hour at the doctor's office, they don't say anything negative about the doctor's office. So why is there is this expectation that restaurants should be like, you know, yeah, especially you show with up, staffing eat issues right now, days, you gotta yeah. eat fast and the rest of it. And and he actually says he actually he pre-eats before he goes out. He has a bite to eat, so he's not hungry when he shows up at the restaurant. He's not starving at least. So he Thank you so much. So the, the two cities, the two cities I mentioned, Santo Stefano, Alexander de la Roca, the, those are the two city seals. People are saying thank you to you, Michael. Oh, uh, you. The audience is, is expressing gratitude. People are saying they're planning to come here when they come and visit. Ask for uh, me by name. I enjoyed the experience <laughs> just watching. I look forward to travel there for myself, to try for myself. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, awesome. Shall we stroll? Yes. Let's do it. Put Tampa on the map for the food. Hey Mike, can you just give me a one, two, three, four into that mic? I just want to make sure it's still connected. One, two, three, four. That's great. Thank you very much. Really special place. Imagine thank you. those geo found somebody you knew. Cheek says thank you very much. Uh, Diana Pomba says uh, congratulations for this wonderful restaurant. You've made some fans. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. We're, uh, we're just walking up to 7th Avenue in Ybor City. The Columbia is up here on our left. Uh, I mentioned Nana's house. This is Nana's house. You want to walk this way? 
<laughs> yeah, we, we, we started out here and we talked about these as being these shotgun houses. Right, so we're, we own this house right here. That will be our Nada's house where we'll do, uh, do group events. Ah, so cool. We're renovating that right now. Very cool. Thank goodness for the chickens, right? <laughs> now we know. Now we know why the chickens are so important. So we're coming up, coming up to the Columbia restaurant. Columbia opened in 1905. The uh, which makes it the longest it's uh, the, continuous operating restaurant in the entire state. It's the oldest. That's okay. correct. That's correct. And in the state, we're also the uh, largest Spanish restaurant in the United States. Yeah. Started by our uh, founder, this is Casimiro Hernandez, who was a uh, who was Spanish but came from Cuba. In the, eight, uh -huh. in the late 1800s and started this restaurant in 1905. Restaurant started here on the corner as a corner bar. Saloon Columbia, actually we, we were trying to figure out our 100th anniversary and we started doing some research and found out that the good news was that we are the oldest restaurant in Florida. The, the bad news, if there is any, is that we actually opened December 17th, 1903, um, which is the same day the Wright brothers took flight. Oh, wow. So that's a little bit of uh, U.S. history. That's how old we are. So we opened as a saloon, became a restaurant in, uh, in 1905. We have a very famous menu item called our 1905 salad. Which you guys make table side, I, I've heard, right? We are just getting back to making a table side, something we've done for years. We had to stop during the pandemic. Of course, but that makes sense. We're just getting back to doing that. We also make the sangria table side. It's just part, of, again, part of the experience. Yeah. And uh, we mentioned, we talked before about going through all, you know, lots of things in history, including the flu back in 1918 and uh, prohibition. Babe Ruth, famous baseball player in, in America, was very famously thrown out of the Columbia for being drunk, I think during Prohibition, which is kind of a, a contradiction. But um, we, uh, we threw him out, and uh, he brought us a baseball bat and let, we let him back in. People are shouting out the 1905 salad. It's, it, it's, uh, it's quite famous. <laughs> so a lot of Spanish, Spanish and Cuban tile. Beautiful. We can seat 1,700 people. We have 15 dining rooms. And they also have locations, as you know, at the History Center and St. Augustine. We have six other locations. Yep, six other locations in Florida. We have we have Sarasota, St. Augustine, Celebration, Sand Key, Tampa Bay History Center, and the Tampa Airport. There you go. This is the that makes it official. You don't get one of these just by uh, opening up your, your doors. You gotta be here for a little while to get one of these sides. And we have another sign down here about the coming of the Italians, I think. Mike, are the flamingo shows back happening? They are back. They are back. How long does that happen? Uh, it's, uh, I won't be able to hear you up there. You gotta... the, the, uh, the, we're doing the live flamingo shows twice a night on the weekends and during the week, I think they're closed on Sundays. Uh, all the information is on the website. So, Rough Riders. Hey. Uh. So, so we opened, uh, we gradually, this is an entire city block. We opened, I mentioned, I mentioned the uh, patio dining room, Don Quixote dining room opened in 1935. There's the man himself. The family, uh, the family was a was a big fan of uh, Cervantes and uh, Don Quixote. Yeah. So uh, I don't think you could grow up in Tampa and not have memories here. Dreaming. I uh, remember coming here with my Spanish class in high school. Dreaming, dreaming impossible dreams. All right. Amazing. Which, as long as you work hard, you can do it. Amazing. Uh, amazing. Well. Oh, and they do sell the 1905 salad dressing. This is our retail shop. We we sell dressing. We sell seasoning. Sangria pitchers, coffee. Got it. Got to have the gift shop. 
I will mention, this is, I think, I think this one over here is the coming of the Italians. This is a marker, historical marker on the other side. Um, do you, do you want to, I'm going to turn it over to you. Do you want to maybe mention that marker there? When, uh, well, well sure. we, can, we, can, we can make this an official end to episode one of this you, uh, live stream. Oh, that's great. And Amazing then we can, and we can symbolically hand the, hand the mic <laughs> over to Gio. And then Gio will, uh, I know we've run a little bit late. Do you still have time for us? I do. Right? Yeah, thank you so much. And really promote Ebor City, I'm for. That's awesome. Well, this is definitely doing it to a big audience. So thank really thank all of you for joining us. I'll see you in Tampa and Ebor City. Whenever you come, you ask for me. Awesome. Here you go. Thank Great. you, my friend. It's good to see you. Thank, thank you. you. Good to see you. I'll see thank you next you. week, awesome. if not sooner. Thank you again. Amazing. Amazing. What thank you, brother. I'll see you soon, okay? Thank you.